Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Warren Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are glad that you are able to make this morning for this special uh, Eastern program. And uh, this was designed for us to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. Amen? And uh, this morning we were privileged to have Heartland College Choir with us. And they are going to be lifting up the name of Jesus through music. And I believe that God will speak to us through these songs. And let me say a little bit about uh, Heartland College Choir. I myself have sung uh, with uh, Mrs. Betsy Mayer. Would you stand up so everyone can meet you? So she is the director of the choir. And uh, we sang uh, back in 2006. We went and to Brazil. We went to Brazil and uh, yeah. also Colombia. We need a mic for you. So where's the, that mic there? Yes, let me get it for you here really quick. Anyway, so it's a privilege to have them here in our church. And uh, I'm sure you're going to be blessed by uh, this program. But would you tell us more about uh, the choir and about the work you do? It's well, I'm going to just share a little bit about this choir uh, this is our seventh concert since Thursday night. So uh, we're, we're, we, we don't have flat tires in our eyes quite yet, but sometimes we feel that way when we're on this. We're so glad to be with you here this morning. John Carlo and I go back a long way. We have some great history together. This particular choir is my campus choir. I've had smaller groups that I've traveled with. This is the first time in the history of 40 years of choral directing that I've taken this big of a group out on the road, but it's been a great time, and I want to thank everyone. We've made it through, and God has blessed. I have homeschool families that have, are traveling along with us, caravanning. We have our college students. We have faculty singing in the choir, and we have their children. So it's very generational, very community-based group, but we're having a good time uh, ministering through music. Very nice. And uh, we are sure that the Lord will empower them to do this last concert for this trip. And thank you very much for coming. If you received uh, the program for this morning, you have there the outline for the program. And uh, I want to let you know, if you receive an invitation, in addition to our concert this morning, we are inviting you um, to be part of our plant-based cooking class and that you have the dates there. And some of you are into health and you want to learn how to eat healthier. So come. There will be samples for you as well in addition to the training and the recipes. Um, but if you're not into health, you're like, uh, I don't really care about, you know, plant-based cooking class. But you may know somebody, right? And you can give it to them. So it's a free event. So I'm not going to take the time of the choir anymore. I want to invite you to bow your heads with me, if you will. And we're going to invite the presence of God here in our midst. So let us, let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for the gift of life. And we are grateful also for the gift of resurrection. Lord, uh, this morning we all praise you for having victory over death. When you rose again on the third day. And Father, as we... Lift up our hearts to you in thanksgiving and praise this morning. We pray for a special presence of the Holy Spirit. We pray for the choir, for every member, so some of them feel tired and their voices are already used, but you are the one that renew the strength of your people. So bless them, use them in a mighty way, and we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you very much. So the first number that we're singing involves you as well. And if you look, there should be a hymnal in the front pew. You pull out hymn number 10. Come, Christians, join to sing. And much of the world, Christian world, is celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. As Christians, we can r raise our voices to praise our King Jesus. You're going to join us on the second and third stanzas.
Now, we would like to request that as we sing, you don't have to applause because we want you to just keep thinking of the thoughts in these hymns and the last words connect to the next words. So you can just listen and enjoy. We don't need any applause.
Were you blessed so far? Very powerful. And I must say this, you know, the choir every year is doing better. So praise God. I would like to meditate with you in a passage that talks about the resurrection. You're welcome to follow along. If you have a, a Bible with you, it will be Matthew 28. And I do have the verses in the slide you can follow along. But all four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, describe the resurrection. And I'd like to read the, the version from the book of Matthew. Again, chapter 28, beginning verse 1. It says here, Now after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Madeline and the other Mary, probably the mother of James, came to see the tomb. I highlighted their names there because I want you to see that the first people that found out about the resurrection of Jesus were women. But not only that, they receive for the first time the commission to proclaim about the resurrection. Amen? Amen. And apparently Jesus has a place for women in ministry. Would you say amen for that? And he shows that there is no gender discrimination in his kingdom. Notice in the next verse, it says, And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone for, uh, from the door and sat on it. The angel was there relaxing. The earth shook, 
but he was just walking by. It goes on to say, his countenance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow, and the guards, the Roman guards that were securing the tomb, as the Jewish leaders had requested, because they remembered that Jesus often said before he died that on the third day he would rise again. And then they said, that, you know what? Let's make sure no one will steal the body of Jesus, that his disciples will not steal the body of Jesus and make things even worse for them. Because they didn't like the message that Jesus brought. And then, if the news spread that Jesus had raised from the dead, for them, that would be a complete defeat. And they asked for the Roman soldiers to guard the tomb. And the guards shook for fear of him, the angels, the angels, excuse me, and became like dead men. They dropped. One single angel. But the angel answered and said to the women that came in that morning, and for their surprise, guess what? The tomb was open. This angel was there. And he said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for, read with me, He is risen. Amen? Amen. As he said. Nothing new. You shouldn't be surprised. He talked about his resurrection throughout his ministry. Come see the place where the Lord lay and go quickly and tell his disciples that he is what, everyone? Risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. So they went out quickly from the tomb with, what's next word now? Fear, but there was another feeling there. There were, there were mixed feelings. Great what, everyone? Joy. Joy. Oh, yes, that fear, it wasn't like a fear of being afraid. They were like terrified with the whole thing and with the good news. And that fear was mixed with, with you know, joy. And what did they do afterwards? It says that they ran. Oh, friends. When I hear disciples of Jesus dragging their feet to, to tell the good news about Jesus, I know they have not had an experience with Jesus. Well, because when you have an encounter such as this and receive the good news of Jesus, you want to run to tell the good news. Amen? And ran to bring his disciples' word. Friends, I want you to meditate on this statement right over here. Without the resurrection of Jesus, there is no what? Christianity. Christianity. Do you realize that Christianity hangs on the fact that Jesus rose from the dead? And if there was no resurrection, there is no reason for us to be here this morning. That's how important the resurrection is in the ministry of Jesus in our behalf. And we're going to see why in a little bit. The Apostle Paul actually said that in 1 Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ is not risen, he's reasoning with his audience here, by the way. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also what, everyone? Empty. But we know it's not the case. So think about that. The resurrection of Jesus is key for the Christian faith. I want to give you eight reasons to believe that Jesus rose from the dead. How many reasons did I say? Eight. And that's because I want to allow the choir to sing more. Because there are more than eight. You understand that? I'll just go quickly here. Think with me for a moment. Number one, Non-Christian authors in the first century wrote about the mysterious empty tomb of a man called Jesus. 
It wasn't only the four Gospels that you find about this man, Jesus, and his tomb was found empty. Even Josephus, which, were, which is a famous first century historian, he wrote about it. Number two, there are minor discrepancies in the four Gospels. And some people, they think that that speaks against Christianity. No, 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 no. If you go to a legal court, they expect the witnesses to have minor, what kind of, of discrepancies did I say now? Minor discrepancies because if everything is perfectly aligned, they know it's a conspiracy. And the minor discrepancies were preserved in favor of the Christian faith. Number three, testimony of women had no legal value in those days. If you want to make up a story and make it really convincing, you want to say that one of the disciples went first in the tomb and saw that the tomb was empty. But the biblical account says that God chose women to witness the empty tomb despite of the culture of the time. You understand that? Number four, body res resurrection was what kind of teaching in those days? Unpopular, even among the Jewish community. In fact, a lot of the Jewish leaders did not believe in the resurrection. Of those that believe in the resurrection, they believe it would happen in the last day and there was no chance to happen before. And uh, Greek philosophy was infiltrating heavily the Jewish community and the popular belief is that resurrection is not bodily, just the spirit, like a ghost. And if you're going to make up a story, let's use what most people accept, right? But when Jesus rose again, the account in the gospel says that he said to his disciples, once he found them, touch me. And he ate with them. You understand that? And they saw him ascending to heaven in bodily form. Reason number five to believe in the resurrection, death penalty for violation of what, everyone? Tombs. As far as I know, history tells that none of the disciples were in jail or put to death because of the violation of the tomb of Jesus. That tells a lot, friends. Number six, Two of the three groups involved in the resurrection of Jesus had no interest that Jesus' body would disappear. Who are the three groups? Number one, the Roman soldiers. There were Roman soldiers there. And by the way, there are historical accounts that says that there were another army there present to guard the tomb of Jesus in addition to what we find in the gospel, the Roman soldiers. They had no interest because they had to keep peace in the provinces under their jurisdiction. Second group, the Jewish leaders. They didn't want, you know, the story of the resurrection to go around to cause chaos in their community and lose the prestige of leaders. The only group did not believe that Jesus would raise from the dead. It was the disciples. And the third group that had, you know, that was there, they were so feeble in comparison to the two other groups, the Jewish leaders and the Roman soldiers. Number seven, how could the fearful disciples that were hiding when Jesus died because they thought they're going to come after us? How could the fearful disciples become so bold in carrying the cause of Jesus? No, I want you to think about that because history tells us that all the disciples except one died as a martyr for proclaiming the resurrection. If we're going to make up a story, we want to make up a story that will benefit us and not bring tribulation, persecution, prison, and death you understand that? Peter died crucified upside down. 
John, the only one that didn't die, was because God saved him miraculously. And finally, and I think this is the most powerful one, is Bible prophecy. Old Testament scriptures, friends, listen very carefully. Old Testament scriptures, some of these writings 700 years before the resurrection of Jesus and more, a thousand years before the resurrection of Jesus, had predicted the coming of the Messiah, the ministry of the Messiah, and the death of the Messiah, as well as His resurrection. In fact, when Jesus rose from the dead, He went for a walk with two disciples that were discouraged. They did not recognize Him. And... Uh, the record says that he was going through the scriptures to show that the Messiah would die and raise from the dead. Going from the scriptures. What scriptures? The New Testament was not written at that time. It was the Old Testament scriptures. Notice what Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 12. Now if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead. And that's the message. What's the relevance of, of that for us today? How do some among you say that there is no what? Resurrection from the dead. Somehow, they believed that if you die before the second coming of Jesus, when he's going to come in the clouds of heaven, and you are not taken up to heaven with Jesus, but you die before that great day, that great event, the blessed hope, and then, too bad. You're not going to raise from the dead. And Paul is questioning that. What are you talking about? If Jesus raised from the dead, how come do you say that we, if we were to die, will not raise from the dead? In other words, that victory belongs to us. Victory over the power of the tomb. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made, what everyone? Alive. Alive. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. That is found in John eleven twenty five. 25. That's what he conquered in that resurrection morning. That's what we are celebrating this morning, friends. Do we have reason to celebrate? Does this choir have reason to sing so beautifully for the Lord this morning? Yes. And they're going to continue. But I want to read uh, one last passage. And this last passage is about a song that they're going to sing. And I asked uh, Betsy Mayer to sing this song with the choir. And I saw that it was not in the program. So I told her, I'll, I'll make sure I tell them. So they did not practice for this concert. But I love this song. Number one is based on the scriptures. And I'm going to read the portions of it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Number two, it speaks about the blessed hope that we have. The second coming of Jesus and the resurrection from the dead. And that brings hope for all of us. Follow along with me. In verse 16, the Bible says, For the Lord himself, who is the Lord here, everyone? That's Jesus. Will descend from where? From heaven. That's the second coming of Jesus. With a shout. It's not going to be secret. With the voice of the archangel and with the what, everyone? The trumpet of God. Do you want to know how loud is that trumpet? Keep reading. Keep reading. Who hears that trumpet blowing? It says here, and the dead in Christ will what, everyone? Rise again. Oh, what a beautiful promise. This is all connected with the resurrection of Jesus. What a beautiful day that will be. When the dead in Christ will rise from the dead. And then it goes on to say, then we who are alive and remain, those that will be alive when Jesus comes, will not see death, but will see Him coming in the clouds of heaven. 
shall be caught up together with them that were raised from the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. So I want to give uh, again the time for the choir as they are going to sing uh, this song that speaks of this blessed hope. And you know what? The Lord wants to see all of you there. The Lord wants to see me there. And I pray that this morning all of us make a commitment to the Lord Jesus. Just in your mind, raise your thoughts to the throne of grace and say, Jesus, I want to be ready when you come. I want to be part of that resurrection day. Is that your desire this morning? God bless you. We had some that weren't singing with us because they don't know that song. But I want to just briefly share with you who we are. I'm going to ask the different countries to raise their hands and you just get a feel for our international student body. 
Ecuador, Madagascar, AT, Sierra Leone, Belize, Zambia, Colombia, the Philippines, Guadalupe, India, Zimbabwe, South Africa. Okay, let's see here. Venezuela. Yes. Brazil. Yes. And Malaysia. Did I get everybody? I think so. United States of America. <laughs> Our last song is a very special song to Watchy Saints. We're waiting for Jesus to come. And if you know the words, you can sing along.
Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much uh, for coming to the Warren Seventh-day Adventist Church. We highly appreciate it. And one thing that I want to highlight this morning, uh, many of the choir member, members are young people. Aren't you blessed to hear young people in our days singing sacred music? They didn't come here with a rock concert for us, but they came here with music from heaven. Amen? Amen. Thank you very much for your dedication and for your ministry. So you have definitely touched our hearts. And I want to say a special word of thanks for the ladies of this church um, because um, you know, when we were planning this event, we realized that uh, their trip back home is 10 hours. About that, right? Uh, about 10 hours. So they're heading back to Virginia. And, uh, and the ladies of this church, uh, they came together to prepare food for them to take on the road uh, so they don't have uh, to wait any longer before they head back home and try to get there as early as possible. Thank you very much for your dedication. I want to say a word of prayer as we're bringing this program to an end. Uh, again, thank you for coming. I hope you were blessed. I'm sure, actually, you were very blessed. Amen? Amen. And uh, I'm going to say a word of prayer, and then they are going to sing a last song, and, uh, and that will be the end of our program. Let's bow our heads together and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we again come before your presence with our hearts even more filled with gratitude for the resurrection of Jesus. Lord, we also thank you for the promise of the resurrection. We praise you for this choir that came to bless us, and we pray, Lord, that you continue to use them for your glory. We pray that you keep them safe as they head back home. Lord, we pray for all of us. We want to be ready when you come. And Father, we give you permission to take our hearts into your hands. Forgive our sins, cleanse us from unrighteousness, fill us with your spirit, fill us with your love. Lord, we claim the promise, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide us into all truth. So lead our lives according to your will. For we pray in Jesus' name, let everyone say, Amen. Amen.
Praise the Lord.